Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com, and I want to let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor about is we create a free two-hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's going to be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also want to let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is going to be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the trading the trading fish daily recap. It's been a long time since we did one. Today seems very warranted for another another version because dude, look at this Kodak stock. Have you seen this stuff? Went from two dollars the other day. My gosh, look at this sucker, man. Someone knew, loaded it, wrote it from two bucks to three bucks. So whoever knew should go to prison. <laughs> Cause it's not fair for the rest of us who are chasing this thing. So it went from $2 to freaking, freaking 50, let me see, where did it run to? 50, 60. Holy crap, 60. So we had to do one. Just had to do one. But before we do this, okay, we're going to put a little disclaimer now. Everything you're hearing from me, I mean, I'm not an advisor, guys. I'm just here to help you guys learn what's going on. So don't take my advice for personal stock advice. I'm not registered. Um, I have shares of this stuff. I traded it. Um, this is educational only. Uh, heck, it's not even educational. It's for fun. <laughs> Things I say is not even true. So don't, don't take it as fact. Okay. So, okay. What it does is it's another word is ETV easy to blow up. I don't know what hell else to explain it to you guys. Uh, I have a big discipline issue too. Shit. I'm on a diet. If I have bags of chips laying around the house, I'm going to fucking pick up the bag of chips and fucking eat it. You know, the only way I do it is just throw all the fucking chips away in my house. So if you do not want to blow up, throw away these tickers. Put it off of your screen. Don't even fucking look at it. The moment you look at it, you're going to want it. Like fucking eating potato chips, dude. I fucking stayed up all last night eating too. I'm supposed to be on a diet. <laughs> But it's in my fucking refrigerator because it's in my pantry. And I'm like, dude, I got to fucking eat it. This is why Alex and I walk around the neighborhood every freaking Monday and Tuesday talking about this stuff. Trading is as much mental as it is technical. You could be the most technical person in the universe, have the best strategies in the universe. You know, we at MIC have winning strategies that work, dude. It fucking works. There's, there's no way around it. It's proven it works. The problem that doesn't work is you. The operator, the guy that's trading, the guy that's clicking. If you do not have the discipline to execute it and to wait and to have proper risk management, you will blow up. It's not the strategy's fault, guys. It's your fault. And we talk about this every Monday and Tuesday. Even I fuck up all the time because of lack of discipline. So what we need to do is put around a fence around our trading, right, guys? And I keep telling everybody, put a max daily loss on the broker side level, call your freaking broker and say, I only want to lose $2,000 a day. Shut me down. If I have a $30,000 account, $40,000 account, I should not be losing fucking half of my account. Call them up. Max daily loss, 5,000. Worst case, 5,000. You fuck up, worst case, and lock your fucking account. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's those scenarios that happen, man. You, you, you just, I don't know how else to tell you because I've been through this and this is, this is something that no one taught me. And this is why people blow up their accounts. They don't fucking understand that how can a scenario like this happen, but it happens all the time. So set your max data loss at the broker level. I've never done that before. I didn't even know it existed. No one told me that. And that's how I blew up a lot of accounts before. But now with the max data loss, boom. It hits a certain point, boom. I cannot keep adding as a loser. There's two, there's two restrictions. There's a max daily size. Like I can't get more than 5,000 shares of the stock for instance, right? So at least it, it mitigates like the damage. And then another layer is max daily loss. And then 420. So that's what I was staring at, guys. I was staring at this seven-day chart. 
And I'm like, okay, if it breaks 320, I'm, I'm screwed. This thing is going to that. So that's why I was like, screw it, I'm gonna take some off. And then when it tanked down so much, I was like, okay, maybe it's weak, maybe it's fake. Because then, then I know what the top is, so that I started to scale. And then when it broke down his, I said, screw it, dude. I, 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 I didn't want to mess with it. There was too much volume. Basically, there are plays that you do not understand. HTBX, I do not understand. So I passed it up and it's okay. There's no ego. Other people banked on it and I'm cool. I don't need to bank on every stock. I, I'm not the expert of all things. If I do not understand how a stock trades, if I do not understand the pattern that the stock trades, it becomes just too random for me. It may, it may make sense to other people, but it does not make sense to me. So once again, you have to fit your trading around your personality. So I use the pre-market situation, which basically, so I shorted it. My, my whole game plan was I'm going to short the highs and cover down to the lows, which was a 1080 line. So I used this as the low. You see this? That's all I did. I didn't expect it to dump. I thought it was going to go back up to give me another trade because it's too early. It's just, you know, it's just, I held it. And then I'm like, zombie hours coming. I was like, you know what, man? I just took my trade. So the, the point, once again, is this. You have to come up with a strategy and stick to the plan. You can't be like rabbit hunting the last river card and thinking, oh, shit, what should I have done? If this was your plan to hold it, then hold it. My plan was not to hold it. I was okay going from 1140, 1130 down to the 1080s. I made my 50 cents. Piker, scalper, whatever you want to call it, I don't really care. That was my plan for this stock. Because this, once again, was not my main stock, guys. The VWAP was here at this time. You're, 20, you're 30 cents away. If you do a bounce, it should be off of this line, which I covered. But then it didn't go back up. It went down, so you must stop out. And you would have died. <laughs> it's not worth it, in my opinion, uh, because this is not a strong stock with a lot of volume. Kodak, on the other hand, every single dip you should buy. Go long, strong stocks, guys. If you want to cherry pick bottoms and bouncers, you got to be quick. You got to be in and you got to be out. And you got to put your stops because you're going to fucking, if you do not put the stops and you turn your neck around and you bought where I covered, which is the bottom of this, you turn around, you're selling it for a dollar lower, guys. That's the fear of these stocks. You can, it can whipsaw up, it can tank back down. So you gotta be careful about buying long, weak stocks. Do not break, you're fighting the trend when you're doing that. This is, this is the classic trade, guys. Um, you should look for these. This is kind of, in my opinion, like the easy one hit, you're done for the day kind of thing. I took a look at Gene. So what Gene did was this. Gene popped up way early in the morning and it tanked all the way down. All I did was this, guys. I shorted around 460 line. How did I get the 460 line? Which is basically view up. <laughs> Simple as that, guys. I forgot, I forgot where I drew it, but I drew it around here. I use a line chart once again. You can use whatever method you want. And I saw some right here. You see this little notch? That's all I did. And it coincided with the view up. The next notch would have been up here. Then you better stop out if it breaks this because it can go back up to here. That's all I did, guys. Very simple. Very simple. You don't need to look for notches. Look for the view up. The stock that's down so much is going to do the first resistance at the VWAP. And once again, this is the first resistance strategy that I'd use. It says that, you know, it's coming far from a deviation from the VWAP. The VWAP is where most buys are because that's the average weight of volume. That basically says the over underline for, for bag holders. And so if I was a bag holder, I'm down like freaking 30, 40 cents. I'm just hoping to break even. So that's why you always have a little bit of resistance when you come back up. And all I did was I just shorted here. I had another one up here to scale. This, and then when we went back down, I covered it. And where did I cover it down? I covered it down, down here. You see this, this cover here, this cover here. That's it. I got the bottom of that and it bounced up. I could have reshorted onto this, but I was busy. And it was zombie, whatever, and so it come down. 
So once again, guys, the goal of trading is not to get the tops and the bottoms of all these things because it's very hard and pretty much impossible to do it all the time. Don't repeat, it's impossible to get the bottoms and impossible to get the tops every single time. Your job is to find the trend. Your job is to make the meat of the move. This was one of these trades where you needed confidence in your lines. You needed confidence in your system because it shot up so fast. Boom. And if you had any doubts, you would cancel your order or you would not short it. But I, I, you know, I trust so much in this system and it, it, you know, it's all it is. So my plan was just to do a simple 460 to 420, make my money 40 cents, move the hell on. That's it. These add up guys. These all add up. Any questions on this trade? We're leading up to the Kodak stuff. So the Kodak stuff is the new stuff that we're learning with the halts. So I'll talk about that. Val, during live training, you're using line charts. I'm using line charts with everything, dude. I, I'm using candles. I'm using lines. I'm using volume. Put it up, guys. You guys got to remember, you don't have to have just one type of chart. You can have multiple charts with multiple time frames. I, use happen, I happen to use one minute. You can use five minutes, three minutes. It's up to you, man. You have to use a thing that matches your strategy. What was your stop on Gene? People always ask, what's my stop on these things? Uh, the stop on Gene, I usually do two lines and then I wait. I have two ads, okay? So on Gene, I have the, I just told you right here, the 460, you see this little notch, and then up to here. And then over this, over 47, I probably stop out because then this is gonna hit to five bucks. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.